All right, gentlemen, uh, this next video and the other one are going to be a little bit different just because um, I recorded what I did with my classes and this is basically an edit of that recording. So it's me teaching my classes, so it'll be a little bit different, but hopefully you'll still get um, a lot out of the discussion. The next, uh, the next chapter we get to is this chapter 1979, so this is a year later. She's now in standard nine, which is form four, okay? And it's called Geography and Destination. Those of you who've read that chapter, what do you think the significance is of the title Geography and Destination? Geography refers, gentlemen, to where she will sleep, where her dorm will be. The chapter tells us that if you're in form four at that school or standard nine those, and, and you get the wrong dorm assignments, it basically tells you, you don't have a chance of being a prefect. Remember, the idea of becoming a prefect in that school was not necessarily because you wanted to lead or you wanted to be something. It is simply, you've got privileges. The rules didn't apply to you if you were a prefect. So, all the girls wanted to be a prefect, they arrived in their standard nine year, hoping to get the right rooms, and they saw the room allocations, even Fat Betty, Fat Betty sees her room allocation and she realizes she realizes she's in the wing of the boarding house. That probably means you'll never be a prefect at all. So she even goes right up to the headmaster and says, please move my room because uh, you know, I don't want to be in those rooms. And she gets back at the end of the holidays and she's in a room that's two doors down from the band rooms. So it's still actually a band room. So that she's still saying to her, you don't have a chance. Uh, Lani doesn't change a dormitory at all. She is, uh, we're on page 123 at the moment. Lani doesn't change dormitory at all the whole year. She stays in the room she is, and she's not unhappy, she says, page 123, with the room especially. It's in the corner of the building, which means it's a little cramped, but also bricked on two sides, making it almost like a real bedroom. Um, and she says the view is pleasant. Um, and she's able to look over uh, the fields or the farmyard where they, um, where they plant um, or they, they've got a little garden there like a vegetable patch where the guys who can't do any other subject do agriculture um, and they have a little garden that they tend, sort of a vegetable uh, garden and it tells us about uh, the old shed and a new shed that has been built and that becomes significant because ultimately you will read in chapters to come that Nomda San Sipo, when he's in trouble with the police, he hides out in that old shed because no one goes there. And this is the key event when Sipo's hiding in that shed. Lady sees what happens and that's what she's ultimately asked to report to the TRC on when she's called by that second letter that we read about yesterday. It's page 125. And they talk about a class, a special citizens class, called National Preparedness. Okay. Now this citizens class, gentlemen, has a lot to do with the apartheid government's... It was called Youth Preparedness, but Major Carlton, who we already know is a racist, who we already know, remember he's the cadet instructor, we already know that he thinks that black people are the like, most dangerous thing in the world and that you need to watch your back and never trust them and that they'll kill all of us and white people need to rise up, he says. He runs this course called National Preparedness. Now back in those days, the government had a course called Youth Preparedness. And it was basically a session, a, a lesson in school, where you would learn about how South Africa functions. And so it was indoctrination. So the youth were indoctrinated into the apartheid system. They were made to fear the enemy, and they were um, trained on how to be a good citizen. So you read about that in 125. Um, they had a special citizens class. It's called National Preparedness. And they learn things in National Preparedness. They need to know in order to be responsible South Africans. The National Preparedness is Major Carlton's brainchild. In other schools, they have youth preparedness, which is about saying no to cigarettes and touching your privates. But in the school, they have national preparedness, which is far more serious. At the bottom of page 106, we read again about Boye. Now, Boye was one of the boys who did what? Boye uh, was one of the boys who framed Zulu. 
um, the previous year, and now we see him being lauded as a hero. But on the bottom of page 126, he wins the Sword of Honor. The Sword of Honor is awarded annually to the best cadets in the country. The best cadets are given a chance to shine at the annual displays. On the day of the annual display for Eastern Cape, all the white schools from far and wide come converge in Port Elizabeth. There is a military marquee for the displays. Da 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 da. But Bowie is wins this uh, sort of honour. And also, it says at the bottom of page 127 that it's an absolute certainty now that Bowie will do what? Become head boy. Now, see how this works in Lali's mind. What has she seen Bowie as? You know, what is incongruent? What doesn't sit nicely about the situation. The school honors boys like Boye, but boys like Boye actually victimize other kids. And so this doesn't sit nicely for Lali. You know, these guys are celebrated and actually she says, what does she call Boye? What does she call the teacher who punishes Zulu? What does she call these people a couple of chapters ago? Savages. Remember she calls them savages. She says, South Africa, or part of South Africa, tells us that black people are savages, but actually, these people are savages. So how does this work in Lali's mind, that one of the savages becomes dead boy? She says that, that is why she's so cynical about the system. You get a real sense of, uh, of South Africa and, and the way they use schools and young people um, to perpetuate the apartheid system.